Hey guys, Carolina Prepper here. Uh, today we're going to do a how-to video. You see I got a couple of Lowe's buckets here. They're five gallon uh, buckets. I got the white tops that have the rubber seal on them and we're going to make a water filter. Uh, in one of the last videos I showed you how to go to U.S. Foods and how we did kind of a Prepper 101 on buying uh, food supplies for a first timer. A um, couple of you left comments about needing more water. We only bought one case of water. True, uh, if you listen to the video, I think I made a comment in there that said we are going to make a water filter. So today's that day. I'm going to show you how I do it. There's thousands of them out there on the internet. So whether you use this version or another version, that's fine. But I'll tell you what supplies are needed, how much they cost, and roughly how much time it's going to take. All right, stick around. All right, guys, uh, a couple of supplies. You're going to need a drill. You're going to need uh, either drill bits or I'm using spade bits here. I have a 3 8 spade bit for the spigot. I have a 5 8 uh, bit for the filter. Um, let's see here. I have one of the 10 inch um, ceramic filters. These, uh, and, and by the way, you can buy these at our um, store, Homestead Nation store. Um, roughly $22 for one of these. I use these as the replacements to the Berkey black filters in my Berkey. Uh, they work awesome and uh, they're going to filter out like 99.99% of the junk that you get in your water. Uh, so roughly $22 in the store and then a spigot. Uh, I'll also put this in the store. I think this is 3 or $4 so give you an idea of what it costs. Um, so we're going to go ahead we're going to start drilling this thing out. Really we need to make two uh, holes. One for the filter and one for the spigot. Um, in addition to that, it'd be helpful to have some Teflon tape to go around the threads uh, and or um, some silicone caulk. I don't have either with me. I have them both down at the off-grid cabin. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it together without it. And if I have any leaks, and I assume I probably will because I can't get this water tight more often than not, um, I'm going to just have to go back and address that with some Teflon tape or uh, some silicone caulk. So I'll get that next time. But I'll go ahead and I'll show you how we do this now. All right. Uh, you see that I got the two buckets that I got from Lowe's. Uh, I believe these were $2.98 a piece. You don't have to use buckets. You could, I've seen people use stainless steel pots that you get from Walmart or what have you. Anything that holds water. Uh, because I don't care what this looks like, um, these are fine. But if you want something that looks a little nicer and you don't want to spend the money, uh, the $300 plus dollars on a Berkey, uh, you can certainly get nice stainless steel pots or something else that makes sense for you. All right. All right, guys. Um, here we got the drill. I'm going to try to drill down in there. Gosh almighty, it's not going to allow me to do that. So uh, learn on the fly. What I'm going to do is just flip this bucket upside down. And I'm going to simply take the three, three eighths inch spade bit. And I'm going to drill down through the middle here. Hopefully I get a decent poke down through there. All right. That was easy enough, right? And I'm also going to need to drill down through the bottom, or I'm going to need to drill down through the lid. So uh, I'm going to get a Sharpie marker, and I'm going to mark that. All right, so I go ahead and get the Sharpie marker. I want to make sure that it's lined up properly so the buckets are lined up. I'm going to go ahead and just mark that so I know, because it's not completely on center, because there was a little plastic uh, nipple or nub on the bottom of that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark that, and we're going to drill right down the lid, right down in the lid. Alright, so that's the same 3 inch, 3 eighths inch drill bit. So now we have that ready to go. Now really, what we're going to do is we're going to take the filter and we're going to go ahead and install it. Now the top bucket is obviously where you're going to put the dirty water. It's going to go through the filter and it's going to drip down through the hole into the bottom bucket, which is your reservoir. So we're going to go ahead and install that now. Hopefully it's a good snug fit. Looks like it is. I want to try to go in as straight as I possibly can. Alright guys, so this is what it looks like here. Uh, the 3 8 inch spade bit, um, it did require a little finesse. So we had to kind of route it out a little bit. It, you want it tight. You don't want it to just drop through there. You want it to be able to catch the threads on the, on the spigot as well as the filter. Um, so you want it to be tight, but it was too tight where I couldn't thread it on. So I just had to route it out just a little bit. Be careful when you're doing that um, because you don't want to route it out too much. So it's trial and error. It'll take you a couple of minutes. Don't get frustrated. Um, but if you go too big, you got to start over. 
So um, this is what it looks like. I got it through the bucket as well. Just kind of thread it on there so it's nice and tight. All right, I think we got it on there nice and tight. Now you put the rubber washer that comes with the filter on there and then you can go ahead and tighten it down with a nut. And not a whole lot of threads left over. Get it on there nice and tight. All right. So that's what it looks like. So that's going to sit on top like so. All right, so now we got to figure out where we want our spigot. It's probably going to be right in the bottom of the lows. We got to change up our spade bit to the 5 8 That's what I'm going to use. That looks like it's going to be darn near perfect. Again, I want it to be very tight, so I can't have it too big. Yeah, I mean, that looks like it should be right on it. I might even have to route this out a little bit as well. But we'll get it figured out. So that's it, really. Two, two cuts. Two holes in there, and then we should be able to rock here. So stick around, we'll show you the next part in just a second. All right, guys, so you just want to figure out where you want your spigot. Try to go in as nice and even as you can. All right, now we're going to see how much finesse it's going to take to get this thing in. So you just want to be patient here, don't break the spigot, don't cross thread. That's all going to lead to leaks later on. We're trying to avoid that the best we can. All right. It's so close to threading. I'm afraid to route, to route it at all. But I'm going to give it a couple more turns and then I'm going to give it a try with routing it. Just give me a little tiny bit. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do is route it. Go back to trying to thread it. I think that might have done it. I hope that might have done it. If not, repeat. Now we're definitely through now. Okay, so you see how that worked out. And by the way, there are directions on here, fellas. I know we don't like to read them ever, but they're on here just in case you feel like checking them out. Shows which way the washer goes. Here's kind of a rounded bevel end. That's going to be on the outside of the spigot and you want the flat side against the bucket and then on the other side you just invert it so the rounded side is towards the spigot the flat side is on the bucket that should hopefully prevent some leaks with a potential for leaks um, if not you know teflon tape maybe some caulk around there like i said some silicone that should seal it up but we'll see how it works without all that all right, I'm going to finish this up and then we'll, we'll come back and we'll show you whether or not this thing holds water and how it, how it works. All right, stick around. All right, guys, so the spigot's in. We got the nut tightened on the other side with the washer. We got the washer on the spigot side. We got the filter in there. You can put as many filters as you want. Um, the only thing is the more filters is going to filter the water faster. I don't know that I'm going to be in a hurry for water off grid. Um, I can certainly wait for the 30 minutes this might take to drain down. And I don't know that I'll even have five gallons at any one time anyway. So the plan is to use the, the uh, rainwater catchment system. We're going to use that to uh, catch water and then put it in here. And there we go. Pretty easy peasy. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to fill it up and kind of give you an idea how long it takes to get this thing rolling. Alright guys, so we have put everything together. We are ready to give it the first trial run here. Um, we only got about that much water filtered. So it takes a long time. It's been several hours. So, I mean, if you're going to do this, you probably want to fill it up at night and go to bed. You wake up, you got a bunch of filtered water. Um, just a quick tip. You're never going to want to actually drink the first run through here. So we're going to just let it run through once. And then uh, we'll probably just put this water on the bushes or the trees. Believe me, they need it. But there's a uh, very small particulate that comes out of the filter the very first time. So they say just, you know, flush it through the first time. Don't drink the stuff that you get out. So we're going to give it a shot here, show you how it uh, works, and then just run through everything that we just did. There it is. 
fresh, clean drinking water. I told you I wasn't going to drink it the first time. Anyway, okay, so we had two buckets. You can certainly get these for free at a variety of places. Uh, we bought these. I had some old used ones, but they didn't smell so good, so I wanted to get something that was cleaner. I think we had $8 invested in the buckets and the lids all total. Uh, the spigot was about $4. Again, you can get it in our store. The filter was about $22. You can get that in our store as well. We'll put links in the description. So what's it come up to? 26 and 8 is uh, roughly $32. So for $32, you got uh, an unlimited supply of fresh drinking water. Get it out of a pond, rainwater, creek, whatever, uh, and it should be safe for drinking, and you wouldn't have to go ahead and boil it. This is going to filter out 99.99% of any of the nasty stuff that's going to be in water. It's going to be fresh, clean drinking water. So um, we appreciate you watching. Like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to check us out. We've got some interesting things coming up on the Homestead Nation. Uh, you can check out the brand new channel. We'll put a link to that below. No content up on it yet, but we're going to do that next week. So make sure you subscribe to the new channel, okay? Thanks for watching.